Hi, my name is Emily Marchese, student at the KVCC Culinary Program. I'm going to be making seared scallops with sautéed mushrooms, broccolini on a beet rhubarb puree with candied bacon uh, and pickled ribs today. Okay, so today we're going to be making uh, seared scallops with sautéed mushrooms, broccolini, some pickled breads, a beet rhubarb puree, uh, and candied bacon. Um, so we'll start with the mise en place that I did for this. So the first thing I made was a beet rhubarb puree, um, as you can see right here. What I did to make that is I peeled, washed, peeled, and did a large dice on some beets. I put them in water um, with like a cup of the rhubarb, let it all break down until it was tender. Um, then I pulled the chunks out and I blended them to make a really thin puree. And then these are pickled reds. So pickled reds are a quick pickle, which is one of my favorites to do. You take red onions, you slice them up. I usually do a combination. I like to do red vinegar, but you can do really any kind of vinegar. Um, you do vinegar, a little bit of water, some sugar, and then whatever spices you want. I did star anise and clove in these ones. Um, and then you literally just heat up um, the vinegar, water, and sugar. Once it's going and the sugar's melted, you can pour it right over and it does a quick pickle. And it tastes really quite nice. Um, these are just little diced up candied bacon with some brown sugar and cayenne. Um, you just do them <clears throat> slow cook in the pan, uh, continuously stirring just to make sure they get nice and coated. Um, and then these, which are beautiful, are just a mandolin daikon radish. Um, so just washed and done very thin on a mandolin to add some color and texture to the plate at the end. Okay, so those are going to be our garnishes for the top of the plate. Um, now we're going to go ahead and start the process for searing the scallops and getting the mushrooms and broccolini going. Um, so the first thing to know is that I, you don't have to do this, but I find with scallops, I do like to cure them. Um, so now they've had the cure washed off. As you can see, they're completely naked now. But what the cure is, is a mix of 50% salt to 50% sugar. Uh, you completely cover the scallops in that. I do a little bit of liquid on them, and then I give them at least 10 minutes. They can actually set for like 10 to 20. Um, and then you rinse it off and they're good to go from there. And what it does is it helps the flavor a lot. Um, and it also, it helps the, the sear and the color on them. Um, so let's go ahead and start these burners here. So the first thing I'll get started is my mushrooms and broccolini, just so they can kind of get sauteing while we get the scallop searing. hear that burner is on we'll go ahead and turn this burner on so we can get it nice and hot so for searing you always want to make sure your pan is super hot um, I start with a with a dry pan and I completely heat it um, and then I add my liquid so that way your liquid isn't heating up in your pan while your pan is heating um, a good way to test this is once you feel like your pans hot you can actually take like a drop of water and if it sizzles off then your pan is hot enough Okay, so this is a combination of clarified butter and oil, which is my favorite to work with. Add a little bit to our saute pan. Um, so clarified butter is butter that is just cooked uh, over a long, slow period to separate the milk fats. Um, then you pour off the top away from the milk fats to make it so it has a higher burning temperature, which for sear searing scallops is pretty necessary so you don't get the, the char and burn in there from the butter. here. All right, well those are heating up. I'll get some gloves on. Okay, I'd say this pan is probably ready to get some mushrooms going in. And you can feel this one is starting to warm up, but it's still not quite hot enough to see. Personally, that way I like to do mushrooms. I like to get my pan hot, but I'm not trying to sear them. I'm just trying to saute them. So I do like to add my liquid a touch before. And then just go ahead and add those. 
and make sure when you add anything, you always season it. So a little bit of salt and pepper that we have over here. Uh, really basic on the seasonings. I wanna make sure that they keep the mushroom flavor. Um, I'm also gonna deglaze with wine later and mushrooms tend to soak up anything you cook them with. Um, so they're gonna get that wine flavor in there as well. So a little bit of pepper. And I am a big lover of the pepper, so probably a little heavier than some would. going. And those will take a minute to kind of start to cook down and wilt. Um, once they cook down and start to wilt a little bit, I'll have the broccolini. Um, the broccolini I did pre-blanch, so when you blanch broccolini, you essentially start it in a pot, you boil it uh, for just like a minute or two, and then you put it in an ice bath to keep the color. Um, main point of that is number one, to keep the color of your broccolini. Um, also, it helps it when you are going to cook. It takes a lot longer to cook the whole way through and come to temp. So it makes it a lot easier when you're dealing with a dish like this. Um, so this looks like, you can see the steam kind of coming off there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. It feels nice and hot. So we're going to add our butter oil combination here. And then you do want to give it a minute, but not too long, to let that, that butter and oil now heat up in the pan because you want it when you put these scallops down you should be able to hear it sizzle when it hits the pan and that's what's going to cause that sear all right that feels good to me you can start to see little bubbles that start to come up in your liquid um, that's usually my telltale i find if your your oil has gone clear it's probably a touch too hot and you can hear that sizzle. It means we have a nice hot pan. Turn that down just a touch. Okay, a nice sizzle. Anytime you place something in a pan that you're searing, always go the part closest to you to the part farthest from you. So if oil does splatter, it's not going to splatter at you. It'll splatter away from you. Just like that. All right, now scallops are a pretty quick fire. Um, I like to let them almost completely sear on one side and then turn off the burner and let them finalize their searing. Um, you can kind of see it, I'm sure, in the camera there, how they're like starting to separate on the edges a little. Um, and the more they sear, they'll actually kind of let go of the pan for you on their own. So if I were to try, this one's already too bad. Sometimes if you try to do like an immediate flip, they'll actually stick to the pan and they can tear. Um, these ones had a really nice first year, so they did not do that, which is good. All right, and use a stir over here, let's get in there. Okay. I think our pan can use a little bit more liquid here. It looks a little dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and add our white wine to these mushrooms. That beautiful flavor in there. Put that to the wine. And we'll turn off this burger just a little bit here. All right. Yeah, let's go back and check out our scallops here. As you can see, we've got a pretty nice sear there. Very nice. I am going to give them just a second longer to really make sure they get a good cook on them. But this here looks great on me. I'll go back over to our mushrooms here while those finish up. Okay. And these are out of place right now. So we should be good to add our broccolini. And just do our final little finishing cook on this. do cook my veg in separate pans, but for this specific purpose, I figured it's all kind of going together, um, and it was already pretty cut, so I felt very comfortable doing them both in one pan. Okay. And if you look at the scallops, they have a beautiful sear on them, you can just turn them right around. I like to turn my burner off at this point, and let them finish cooking right in the oil. The pan's still hot, they don't take a lot of time for that residual heat. We'll kind of finish that, that cooking, not overdo them, and you still have a beautiful sear on the top. 
And while those are finishing, make sure we've got everything getting coated and warmed up over here. Beautiful. All right. And go ahead and turn the burner off. So that'll give us all of our main components. So one of the main purposes of my presentation today um, was to show the searing of the scallops, but also plating the dish, because that is one of my favorite parts um, of cooking, is making a pretty plate um, and understanding that this is a canvas. Um, so when I think about plating, I always think about a few things. I think about number one, so a big thing I'm notorious of is I tend to go really heavy um, on the amount of items that I put. Sometimes it's good to, to remember you don't always need large portions, it's just remembering good portions um, for the plate that you're using. So I always mentally image this outer rim is non-existent, this is my plate, this is inner rim. Um, and I always want to look at colors, shapes, and height. So lots of contrast. So that's part of why I did the rhubarb beet puree today is number one. Um, this is something that's very native to Maine ingredient wise. It also is going to give a beautiful color um, for these scallops to go on to. So I like to do a nice little drop. Uh, something I was lucky to learn is if you hold your spoon like a pencil, it gives you a lot of control. You can start here and kind of just drag it across just like a pencil. It gives you a beautiful line. Um, and that's again going back to that, the lines and the colors and shapes and contrasting. Um, the, the more you have different shapes against each other, the more it kind of um, plays together. So for example, I'm now gonna take some of this broccolini. And I think we'll go this way across. Just kind of create, again, contrast of colors, contrast of lines going different directions. Go ahead and we'll do the mushrooms next. And actually, we're gonna follow that line of broccoli. Um, again, just really giving it the contrast here of the colors of that brown next to kind of the brown tan next to the green over the red here. Um, this is also, again, where I like to remember my portion control. Every part of me wants to add the rest of these mushrooms, but I don't actually think the plate needs it for plating purposes wise. So for our scallop, swap these around here. All right, so these, oops, look, beautiful sear on them. You can tell they've finished cooking. They have a nice little bounce to them. Um, typically, scallops only take one to three minutes to cook. It does depend on the size. If they're quite a bit larger, they will take a little bit longer. Okay, and these, I'm actually gonna keep right in a straight line. Um, we're kinda gonna follow our puree here. give us, we have line, 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 line. We are circles from the scallops, so lots of colors, lots of contrast happening there. Change out gloves and get a fresh set, and then we'll do some quick garnishes. So garnishes are probably, again, one of my favorites because they're kind of hand in hand with plating. They're a great way to add color to your plate. They're also a great way to add other textures and flavors to your plate. So today, these pickled reds, which I think will go quite nice with our flavors here. So there's a nice little pop of that red back on top, so kind of carrying it through from the bottom to the top. Uh, and something is always, always place things with intent. So something I've learned about plating is it should have a reason for being there. Don't ever just plop things on a plate. It does not have to be perfect. Wherever you want to see those little bits of color where we can add some height. I really like pickled reds because they do kind of add some height as well as the color. Um, so if you, like for example, this dish tends to be, it's more flat to the plate. 
This is a great way to get that little bit of height here uh, on the top of that scallop. And then we have some of the candy bacon right here. This, I think we're actually just gonna kind of do a little crumble right across. It's really just gonna add some texture, some flavor, a little bit of depth to our plate. I do try to keep everything very centered. Um, I try to pick one point in my plate that I base uh, my whole design off from. So today I chose the center of my plate. And then now we'll do our mandolin daikons, which are beautiful. And this really just to add again a little, a little flavor, um, texture, and color. And then we also have that, you know, that contrast again happening here. I always like to make sure that when I am plating garnishes, I'm being mindful about what's showing and, and what the consumer can see when they look at the plate. All right, so this looks pretty good. Uh, what's the one thing I could use to do real quick? As you can see, we've got a little bit on the edge of our plate here. Just give it a quick plate right wipe. Make sure all of our stuff looks clean, well put together. And that would be a fully plated seared scallop with sauteed mushrooms, sauteed broccolini, uh, candied bacon, pickled reds, and daikon radish on top.